right, I'm back, and we're going to be reading Smart Cookie. You know, Mommy and Daddy always says I'm a smart cookie, so I'm excited to read this book with Miss Erica. Well, she's going to be reading it. You know, I'm not the big six yet. But anyways, we're going to read Smart Cookie. The Smart Cookie, written by Jory John and Pete Oswald. The Smart Cookie, written by Jory John and Pete Oswald. Greetings, I'm a cookie. I live in a bakery on a street corner near a river. Come on in. Welcome to our little community. It's a warm and supportive place to spend some time. Pretty fantastic, eh? These days, life is sweet, but my journey wasn't always a cakewalk. When I was younger, I couldn't have imagined fitting in here. For a long time, I didn't feel comfortable speaking up or sharing my ideas. I didn't feel like a smart cookie. I wanted to be a cookie who knew all the answers, a cookie who felt confident in a group, a cookie who said, aha, when solving a puzzle, like this, aha. Looking back, I had some trouble in my early days. I went to school in a gingerbread house. Our teacher, Miss Biscotti, was kind and patient. When I arrived each morning, she'd wave at me and smile. But I didn't get the best grades, and I never raised my hand because I couldn't think of the answers as fast as the others, and I was the last to finish most tests. It wasn't because I didn't care, and it wasn't because I didn't try. Sometimes I'd get distracted and mess up, even though I knew the material. Those were the most frustrating moments of all. Once I misspelled the word dough, that was rough. Another time, I added when I meant to subtract. Occasionally, we'd have a lesson where I had absolutely no idea what was happening. I just couldn't keep up. I imagined that my desk was a raft and that I was completely lost at sea, because that's what it felt like. At night, I slept in a cookie jar. I had about six dozen roommates. You move. No, you move. No, you move. Move. No, you move. I'd stay awake and stare out the window and worry. And it went this way, day after day after day. But then something happened that changed everything. It all started with the homework assignment. Miss Biscotti requested our attention one afternoon. Tonight, I would like you to create something completely original, she announced. It can be anything you want. Please bring it to class tomorrow. That was it. There were no further instructions. Miss Biscotti winked at me as I gathered my belongings. I felt like I had a million butterflies in my stomach. Create anything? Something original? Do tomorrow? Gulp. When I got home, I immediately went to work. At first, I tried a cooking project. The results were half-baked. Next, I tried to hammer and nail something. It splintered immediately. Then I tried making a sculpture. It was a complete bust. I wondered if I was about to fail yet another assignment. I was stuck. I stared out the window and watched the rain hit the river. There was something mesmerizing about the water, how it moved in such a chaotic way swirling around and around, yet ultimately figuring out exactly where it needed to go. Aha! Suddenly, I had an idea. I decided to write something original, a poem. I came up with a title based on how I had been feeling. My Crumby Days. After that, the rest of it seemed to fall into place. I wrote and I wrote. I lost track of time. An hour went by in a flash. Aha, I said when I was finished. I couldn't sleep that night, but it wasn't because I was worried. It was because I was excited. I felt like I had really accomplished something. I felt smart. The following day, Miss Biscotti asked for volunteers to share what we'd created. One kid showed off his original frosting art. Another kid revealed her sprinkle distribution machine. It was neat seeing how everyone was good at such different things. 
Finally, Miss Biscotti turned to me. Would you like to share anything? She asked. Gulp. I gulped. I thought I'd probably crumble under the pressure, but I made my way to the front of the classroom. I noticed my hands were shaking. My mouth went dry. Um, um. This poem is called My Crumby Days. I said, my voice cracking, and then I read it aloud. As I spoke, I noticed some kids nodding at certain lines. Other kids laughed at parts that were supposed to be funny. As I built toward the finale, I felt myself becoming more confident and animated. And in the end, everybody clapped and cheered. I promise you this, I'll never, ever forget it. Miss Biscotti was beaming. No one but you could have written that poem, she said. It was completely original. Aha! I had done it. I had created something and shared it with the world. Well, my world at least. The rest of the day was a blur. By recess, I was already planning my next poem. I would call it My Sweet Morning. Aha! I thought when I came up with the title. Later that afternoon, Miss Biscotti handed me a note. It said that I should keep on writing no matter what. That meant so much to me. School was a bit different after that. I wasn't so scared to raise my hand or ask a question or share my work. Sure, some things still don't come as easily for me as they do for others, but now I know that you can be smart in many different ways. You don't have to have the answers to every question or suddenly be great at everything all at once. You just need a chance to try all kinds of things, to find out who you are and what you like to do. As for me, I learned that I can write and I can think up great ideas, and I found plenty of other things I'm good at too. I no longer feel lost at sea, it's more like floating down a river. And the best part is, there's always more to learn, because we're all smart cookies. And what is your aha moment? Isn't that such a good book? I absolutely love, love, love when Miss Erica reads to us. Don't forget to like and subscribe to her channel, okay? Well, I'll see you next time. And Miss Erica loves you. And Jesus loves you so much more. Bye-bye now.